This budget gaming monitor has a ton of hype around the internet right now, and it's been on my radar for several months. If you type in Kurui 24E3 on YouTube, you'll see titles like, is this the best value gaming monitor? Probably the best cheap 1080p 165 hertz monitor and the best budget gaming monitor. Optimum Tech also made a video where he was incredibly optimistic about it because at $115, it's packing a crazy amount of value. And he's the monitor god on YouTube, of course, but this monitor recently slipped down to $99, so I knew it was time to strike and finally check it out for myself. Now, this review is not going to have a ton of color accuracy wheels and response time charts and all of that technical data. <laughs> You are a scientist. I've seen the things that you can do. I just know things. But instead, we're going to just focus on what you're getting for your money, a budget gaming experience. Is it worth it or is it not? And don't let some of these fancy Halo headshots fool you. This is still from the point of view of just a casual gamer dad. Before all of that, though, a quick word from today's sponsor. Corsair and their brand new HS80 Max wireless gaming headset. These new Max versions take an already popular headset and give them a boost with an updated 65-hour battery life. Huge 50 million millimeter drivers with Dolby Atmos surround sound, and just like normal, they're as clean as ever. Corsair kindly sent out both the black and white versions, which look amazing, and they're also super comfortable to wear as well. I love the adjustable fabric strap so you can get the exact amount of resistance on top of your head. And the HS80 has been my go-to choice for my own three to four hour PC building live streams where comfort is super important. You can check these out for yourself by clicking that first link down in the description. All right, so let's get all the boring specs out of the way real quickly. This is a 24 inch 1080p 100 65 hertz IPS panel with an advertised one millisecond gray to gray response time. More importantly than any of that is that this monitor supports both FreeSync and G-Sync, which is actually more important than you probably think specifically for a budget gaming monitor. There's a good chance that people are gonna pair a $100 monitor with a budget gaming PC that can't reach FPS numbers up to that 165 hertz mark. And here's where any form of adaptive sync can really help you out. When you're pairing this with a high-end RX 7900 XDX build, like I am here, I don't really need to turn on adaptive sync because I'm hitting 165 FPS in almost every title that I'm playing. But if your PC is averaging more closer to that 60 to 75 FPS mark, then you'll get a much smoother gameplay experience with FreeSync or G-Sync enabled. And speaking of the gameplay experience, that's indeed the best quality of this monitor as a whole. And I'm personally just so impressed with how fun games were to play with this thing right out of the box. Now on paper, they're advertising a 99% sRGB scale, but it's probably lower than that. Here's a quick screen screenshot from the Techlist YouTube channel with the specifics if you're interested. But what's more important is from a gamer's POV, this thing is right on the money. I did a lot of flip-flopping between my two favorite boomer games, Halo Infinite and World of Warcraft's new season of Discovery, and it was honestly just a joy during this entire experience. Now admittedly, I am pairing this monitor with an RX 7900 XTX graphics card which costs 10 times more than the monitor itself, so I'm definitely getting the full potential out of the monitor, but it was just so fun because the colors were all vibrant, I didn't notice any sort of motion blur whatsoever, and if I had to describe the gaming experience with it, I'd use the words clean and smooth. As soon as you unbox the Kuri 24E3, the colors are already tuned for you, and you honestly just don't need to make any adjustments. Color accuracy is usually the section where you can tell that you're dealing with a budget monitor, but I personally swap from an NZXT Canvas 25F, which is a 280 hertz, $300 monitor, and I was shocked with how little difference I actually saw. The colors are vibrant and fun, and the text is super sharp as well. When playing Halo Infinite, there's a ton of different colors depending on if you're indoors or outdoors, and I caught myself just appreciating how good this panel looks for only a hundred bucks, and I'll certainly use that as an excuse of why I kept getting headshot in the face. For professionals where color accuracy is actually important and you're making money with your monitor, some way smarter reviewers than me specifically for monitors have said that it's probably not the best option for those type of people. Now I personally don't think there's too many actual professionals out there that are interested in a $100 monitor that's specifically marketed towards gaming. Again, the colors look amazing as a casual gamer dad, and I think that's more important for the target audience of this product. The other thing that I think that's important is Kurui's three-year no dead pixel policy. I obviously didn't get to try this out for myself, but I know dead pixels are the enemy when it comes to buying off-brand budget monitors, so rest assured you are covered if you were to get unlucky. And just for the record, I've probably reviewed over 30 budget monitors for this YouTube channel over the years, and I don't think I've ever had one of these monitors arrive with a dead pixel. If that happens to you, I would consider that extremely unlucky. Now for a bit more about the gaming experience before we get into the weakest part of the monitor, there is indeed an overdrive setting that you should
should consider if you buy this thing. Overdrive essentially retunes the monitor to give you a lower response time, sometimes at the cost of a lower display quality and accuracy, but I would recommend turning this to normal if you're a competitive gamer. Normal mode will essentially half your response time, but I won't go too extreme because then you are sacrificing a good amount of visual quality. And while we're here, I absolutely love how this on-screen display is set up when navigating through these menus. I very well might be a boomer and I'm starting to appreciate bigger text. I'm not walking around with my iMessage text bubble so big that you can see them from space just yet, but this is in fact a nice little feature that I enjoy. The entire menu is super clean, easy to read, and it's also easy to navigate. The settings you need aren't buried behind four different submenus. Everything is laid out just so easily here and it's super user-friendly, especially for boomers. Now, one thing that us casual gamer dads and boomers don't really review monitors too well at is motion blur. And that's honestly because over the last few years, I don't think I've ever seen a monitor where I'm like, oh, that motion blur is too high for me. I know the young competitive esport gamers can sometimes tell a difference here, but when taking a look at the classic UFO motion blur test, along with my own gaming experiences, I think it's perfectly fine with this monitor. At 165 hertz, everything is super smooth. There's no lagging or ghosting. And again, for $100, this is a crazy panel that you're getting for the money. Now where things take a little bit of a turn in this review is where we talk about the stand because this thing is pretty bad. Ooh. Thankfully, it looks clean and remember that aesthetics are over everything, but the functionality of the stand is pretty awful. There's only a five to 20 degree tilt adjustment. And if you want any sort of other adjustment, which you most likely will, you will need to purchase a separate monitor arm. Now, the good thing is that the Kurui 24E3 does have a 75 by 75 base and mounting support, so you're good to go. And if you're serious about your ergonomics for health or for min-maxing a competitive gaming setup, you are gonna wanna buy that monitor arm, so factor that into your budget. Now, I did enjoy the fact that the stand is a toolless design, so you can just snap everything together without having to find a screwdriver or a wrench or anything, but that's a feature that you're probably only gonna appreciate exactly one time. If you are in the military or something like I was and you move around a lot, then you will get some value out of not having to remember where you put those monitor screws every time you reassemble it. Now, one other thing I don't like about it is that there's no hole in the stand so you can easily route your cables through because this is not good for aesthetics. Instead of neatly tucking in your power cable and display cables right through it, they'll have to wrap around the sides, which I know some of you will hate. But speaking of the power cable and display cables, here's what the power cable looks like with the beefy end right on the outlet itself and no brick in between. And here's what the connectivity is looking like as well. As you can see, we're looking at two HDMI 1.4 ports, a single display port 1.2, audio out, and then the power port. Now, the two HDMI ports and one display port is worth noting because for graphics cards, it's typically the opposite where you have one HDMI port and the rest are display ports. If you were planning on building like a triple screen setup with these monitors, you'll at least need one adapter most likely. Another thing to mention about these ports is that for HDMI 1.4, it can only support up to 144 hertz in 1080p, not the 165 hertz that this monitor is capable of. For console users, which yes, this monitor will work perfectly fine for, you will be limited to 144 hertz with an HDMI cable, where PC gamers using a display port cable will get the full 165. PC master race rules again. But yeah, the only other thing we need to talk about is the pricing. And with everything that I just explained, this monitor would honestly still be a good pick at around $130 or so. The fact that I was able to snipe it for $99 is just absolutely crazy. But according to Camel Camel Camel, it looks like I did get a little bit lucky. If you click on third party new, you'll see when it creeped down to $99. I don't think it's showing when I bought it because that was like a month ago. But either way, it looks like the average price is around $110 to $115. Even at the top end, $115, like I said, you're still getting a ton of value for the money. And yes, I'm definitely going to be building a full budget PC gaming setup guide around this monitor. So make sure you get subscribed for that. And just like normal, I'll have a link to this monitor down in the description if you were thinking about picking it up. And if you're thinking about building a custom budget gaming PC that would pair perfectly with a monitor like this, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.